Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about the Planet X Tempest. Uh, it's new bike day for me, uh, so I thought what I'd do is do a short video showing you close up what you do get for your money from Planet X. This version of the uh, bike is the SRAM Force 1, uh, so it's a slightly more expensive version of the two that you can get. Uh, so that comes in at £1,999 and this is what you get for your money. This amazing titanium frame. So let's start with uh, what you actually get with it. So the chain set is the SRAM Force 1. Uh, so the cranks here are carbon fibre and they come in this quite sort of nice shiny coated finish um, the pedals are my choice you don't actually get pedals with it um, for the simple reason that pedals are a very sort of personal choice to people and i think it's a bit of a waste of money for to include pedals even the cheap plastic ones because basically they just go in the bin which is not that good for the environment these days um, the chain i think is the sram pc 1130 so the kind of base sram chain um, but however, on close up it does look okay. Um, I've not put any oil on it yet or any squirt lube, so it's as it comes uh, out of the box. The cassette is an 1142 uh, in this black colour. Um, I've not used an 1142 before, uh, normally go for 1134, but however, this bike is uh, a single chain ring up at the front, um, so obviously, you've no derailleur that's going to clutter it up and make it look a bit untidy. And after recently changing the derailleur cable on another bike, um, it's a massive pain and I prefer not to do it again. The rear derailleur, again, is Shram Force 1. Um, and it's also got this handy little feature on it, which I'm not sure you can see from this angle. But there is a little button there. And if you press the uh, derailleur backwards, it does actually lock out. I can't do it now because it's in the biggest chain ring, but if you press that button in, when you come to change the wheel, this extends out and locks. So when you're trying to put the wheel back in, you're not having to kind of get it round all this um, faff down here uh, and get the chain. It makes it much simpler to do. If I get time, I will show you uh, a bit later on, possibly on another video. But like I say, this button, uh, you press that in when it's fully extended and it locks this out in a straight position. Um, and then the whole thing just moves out of the way. So it's quite a handy uh, little trick actually. Um, and it does make it one of the good functions that's on this chain set. The front chain ring is a 42T. Uh, so that matches the 42, which is the largest, largest cog on the rear cassette. So you've kind of got a one-to-one -one ratio there. Uh, and you can actually see the detail on it there, which is uh, 42T, 11 speed, X sync. So a narrow wide chain ring at the front. Some of the nice details on the frame, which if you do watch videos that are currently on YouTube from 2019-2020, uh, there are not many to be fair, but one thing that has changed on the frame is this rear dropout, this piece here. On some of the older frames, I say older, that's about two years ago, a year ago maybe, there was more of a, as if the, the chain stays had been cut off and a piece welded on, they were a bit industrial, uh, a plate on this back piece here that's now gone and it's a more sleeker tidier uh, drop out here which nicely protects the axle and also if you move up to the front of the chain stay there was a cut out piece here uh, with a flat piece of titanium that went behind the chain ring that's now gone and it's a much more sleeker again tidier uh, chain stay there so I think that adds a bit of an improvement to the overall look of it um, but as I say, it, it is the Tempest Titanium and the detail on it is absolutely amazing. The listed weight of the bike on the website for a medium size is 9.8 kilos. Um, this is an XL frame and obviously it has a little bit of weight going up through the frame sizes. I, I don't think very much, I think probably about what? 50, 100, maybe 200 grams at the very most. And this bike does not feel very heavy at all. Um, I have got a road bike which is about seven and a half kilos. Um, and that feels light, but this, compared to the bike that it's replacing, which is the, is the Camdale Topstone Sora 2019, that bike when new was about 10, 10 and a half kilos. 
and it felt heavy. I did a couple of replacements on it, like took the wheels, swapped the wheels over for a lighter set of pump wheels, which took half a kilo off, uh, and it did feel better. But this kind of feels light in a weird way. Um, even if it does come in at 10 kilos, like I say, I've not got the facility to weigh it. Um, but it does feel light. Going on to the forks, these are Planet X's uh, brand, I believe, Selkoff. Uh, they're carbon fibre. I like the taper down to the axle here. It's quite nice. It's a very nice finish, black. And I like the detailing on the inside. The brake cable is buried inside the fork, which I think is the de rigueur for newer bikes these days. Um, the wheel set that I chose, you could get two. Uh, this is a Fulcrum 800, uh, Racing 800. Now, I think the only difference between the 800 and the 900 is the rim depth. This is the deeper, I believe, version of the two. Um, my intention though is to swap them out with a pair of uh, Prime Baradur wheels that I got off another bike um, because these come in at I think 1.9 kilos uh, for the set um, and the Prime wheels are something like 1.5 so there's a definite weight saving there and they've got a shallower rim depth as well. Um, so obviously I think a bit more suited for gravel riding really, a bit more flex. Um, but these look okay. I think I'll save them for a winter pair. The tyres are the Schwalb, or Schwalb G1 Ultrabike TLE. 38mm um, width, 700c tyre. Um, quite like them actually. I think they are the knobbliest of the G1 range. Um, and I think listed weight is... I think 500 grams, something like that. So again, not a light tyre, but if you use them as a winter set, um, I don't think you can complain there, really. The set I've got on the other wheels, the Baradeur wheels, are the Panaracer Gravel King SKs on a 43. And I think they're about 350 grams, I'm not sure. These Schwab G1s came with a um, tubes in each one. And I have taken those out and swapped it over to tubeless. To save a bit of weight, and I do think that the Right, it's a little bit better as well, and you can remove it out to more flesh pressures. So the seat post on this bike, the stock seat post, is a Selkoff Zeta alloy seat post. Um, it's 27.2 millimeter diameter, um, and it's just fixed on with this bolt-on clamp. Um, the saddle that I chose from the two options is a Selle San Marco Monza. Uh, and I think the only difference is it's 142 compared to 135mm width so it's a bit wider to give a bit more support although um, I have got another saddle and seat post from my last bike that I'm going to swap out it's the same size uh, and it's just purely down to a comfort thing um, I've not ridden this bike yet so I can't vouch for the comfort I might give it a go see what it's like because I do like the fact that it ties in with the sort of black and uh, titanium colour scheme um, where's the saddle that I would replace it with is white so it might kind of throw it off a little bit but then, you know, it's just like a personal choice the bars and stem are not the ones that you get from Planet X uh, you originally get the choice of uh, the uh, Selkoff stem 100mm so this stem that I've got on at the moment is also 100mm uh, but it's just, an, it's just a new stem and I've decided to put that on because I've taken the Ritchie bars off my other bike, um, the Cannondale one. Uh, these are riser bars, so again it's a comfort thing and I think they're just a bit better quality. Selkoff ones are alright, um, I did get actually the, I didn't get the flared versions, this is the flared drop version um, with I think a 15mm rise uh, and you can see the flare on it there. Again it's just a comfort thing and I have found that the flare does actually work to give you a bit more control when you're off-road. Um, so again, it's just a personal choice, nothing wrong with the original. The shifters, it's just a one touch, a one lever system um, for the SRAM Force. So it's one click I think, to go to a smaller cog and then you push it further to change it to a larger cog at the back. So larger press equals larger cog smaller press, smaller cog. That's the way that I think I'll remember it until I get used to it. Um, the grips, quite a nice feel to the grips. Um, it's just a nice position for your hand. Uh, and these levers as well are also, if I come around this side, uh, I believe the reach is adjustable. 
uh, with a Allen nut just underneath these levers. You need to push this out of the way. There are YouTube videos that show you how to do it. Um, but I think it's quite a straightforward thing to bring the reach in a little bit, if that's your thing. The gear cables. Well, the cabling is external. I've put a bit of uh, helicopter tape on here just to stop the rub on the sides. Uh, but you've basically got the uh, rear derailleur cable on the outside. So if you do want to swap it out, actually it's quite a straightforward job. If you ever try to replace gear cabling that goes through the frame, you know that it can be frustrating sometimes when you can't quite get the cable through. Some of the nice little details on this frame. Uh, just little finishing touches of these invasion stripes um, that are along the uh, top tube. Um, if we go along the, you can see the Tempest logo as well, also on there, um, which is a really nice touch. Um, I think these are all, I'm guessing, laser etched. I'm not an expert, but I kind of like it. It's just subtle. But sometimes subtle is good. It's a bit more classy, I think, rather than having loads of stickers all over it. Um, and also on the rear. Uh, You've also got the three invasion stripes on the back there as well. One thing that has gone from this frame that I've noticed on previous versions is you used to get the round L on the C tube and that's gone for some reason. Um, it's not a deal breaker by any stretch but I just noticed it's gone. And it does actually, although I've not got the measurements for the previous frame version, were the one with the cutouts um, down near the crank and also the dropouts, is that it actually looks slightly slimmer to me. I'm not sure if that's just my eye or what but it does look slightly slimmer and I'm pretty sure when I did my research for getting the bike that the frame or the bike rather for a medium was about 10.5 kilos I might have imagined that but I'm, I'm not sure that I did but it might account for the fact that this bike is a little bit more or looks a bit more slimline than what I remembered it uh, and also the difference in the not having a huge piece of titanium plate welded on behind there and also the big flat drop out section at the back that used to be on it um, I imagine that they weighed a bit as well so that might account for the uh, the weight loss as it were um, one thing as well that has changed from some of the uh, videos I have seen on YouTube for previous versions are these be clips uh, on these cables uh, which I think on one review did pop out uh, so I left the cable hanging and they've just put these um, zip ties in which, to be honest, they're fine for, the, for what the bike is. The, the main reason uh, I got the bike was I wanted a winter bike that uh, could take sort of punishment of the, the wet and the mud, etc. Um, the bike it replaced was a Cannondale uh, Topstone Sora, like I said, in a really nice green colour. But I found it kind of got scratched and, and sort of dinged with stones and things like that. And I think the titanium is just a little bit more forgiving for things like that. Um, and obviously with the finish, I think as it ages, it, it, it will actually look quite nice. So let's give you a final shot of the Tempest. It is beautiful. Well, about six miles in. Uh, no squeaks or rattles so far. Brakes are good. I'm just getting used to the gears. Uh, this one touch lever scenario. And so far, it is pretty intuitive. Let's see how this 42 T does up here. Interesting on that last section, the hill. I normally get up that oh, easier, I think. But then I realised actually at the front I've only got a 42 and on my last bike, which was two up, I had the option of a 36 at the front. So that explains why it was harder. But saying that, I still had two comps left. Uh, I think it's about 10% gradient. It's worse anyway. So this is the beginning of the disused railway line at New Muller Dam. And if you've seen my other videos, this is pretty much where I start the gravel section of my rides. So hopefully, there's not a lot of wind noise and I can talk to you. If it does get windy, I'll put some music over it and put some text on it. So 
still far out to be said, it is quite a posh ride. We're running 45 psi in the tyres, tubeless. Uh, the 38mm 700c Swalb G1 Ultra bikes. It does feel plush. Morning. I think to get a true comparison, ride quality at least, I'll have to put my other wheel set on at some point. And obviously I'll use them on another bike, Cannondale Top Stone. Uh, so that'll give me a more of a, I suppose, a objective opinion on the ride quality. But so far, so good. Morning. Acceleration wise, it doesn't feel too bad. I think to say it, I'm going to guess around 10 kilos, possibly 10 and a half, it feels quite uh, sprightly to be honest. Nice and smooth down that. In and here's the bend. Yeah, no better or worse than the other bikes, so all good. Coming towards the end of the ride, impressed so far. I think it's been quite a smooth ride, uh, all good fun. So that's the ride finished, uh, inaugural ride on Planet X Tempest. Did about 22 miles, um, excellent bike. People talk about the uh, titanium frame, ride quality. I definitely thought it absorbed some of the vibration from the road. Um, I kept the same tyre pressures as I would normally do when I'm riding um, and overall I thought it was brilliant. There was no rattles or squeaks on it, um, the gear shifting was smooth. Um, it took a little bit of use to get in the shifting with the single lever. Um, as you've got the front there, uh, that's a new the sort of strong force one shifter, so it's the same lever put up and down through the gears. Um, it took a bit of getting used to, if you've ever used uh, uh, Shimano gears, um, you use the brake lever to shift as well uh, and that you don't. So a couple of times I went for the brake lever um, and missed the gear lever but um, after 5-10 minutes um, it was all good. If I do get time I will post more rides. Um, I have got a different wheel set to put on it with uh, some uh, Panaracer Gravel King SK tyres on so smaller knobs than this so it would go a bit smoother on the roads and the sort of hard pack sections. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, last look at the bike, it has got my uh, stock saddle on it, uh, not the one I got from Planet X, and it's got a bit of luggage on it as well, obviously for the GoPro bits and pieces. But thank you for watching.